Hey, what's up, Cafe Crew? It's Colin Smith here from Photoshop Cafe. And this week, I'm going to show you how to create a television scanline effect inside of Photoshop. All right, so this TV scanline effect, this is one of the first uh, special effects that I actually did in Photoshop. And I even wrote about it in my book way back in 2002. This was Photoshop Most Wanted. I wrote it with uh, Al Ward. You can see it was uh, forwarded by Scott Kelby. And anyway, so I wrote about this in here. Um, so don't try and find this book because it's probably well out of print a long, long time ago. And uh, But anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create the scanline effect. It really did revolutionize uh, how I started working in Photoshop because it unlocked the use of patterns. And that's one of those things that people don't really use or haven't used because when you open up the patterns inside of Photoshop, you're met with this bubble wrap thing that's just hideously disgusting and you usually close it and then you just move on because you can't really use it for anything. However, if you create your own patterns, you can actually do a lot of really cool things inside of Photoshop. And this actually opened up a lot of exploration for me and I started to explore a lot with different type of design things using guides and grids and different things like that. Now head over to photoshopcafe.com where I've got hundreds of tutorials and uh, you know I've got Tron grids and all kinds of things there. They kind of branch off out of this, but at the very foundation is this TV scanline effect that I'm gonna show you right now where we can work with different blend modes and different layers and different patterns to achieve different results very easily. And at the end of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you a little masking trick that can really add a little bit more dimension to your scanline. So anyway, I know this is a real classic effect. Uh, some of you haven't used this before, some of you have, but check it out, I hope you enjoy it. So without further ado, let's jump in and get started. You can actually find the written tutorial for this as well on photoshopcafe.com. I'll just drop a link in the bottom there for you. So anyway, what we're going to be doing is we're going to essentially be creating patterns and then we're going to be using these repeating patterns to create effects. And in this case, we've got this cool steampunk picture that I got from Adobe TV and we're going to create some brushes. So why don't we start right now? Uh, we're going to choose new. I said brushes, I meant patterns. So we're going to start, we're going to change this to pixels. So we're not going to be working in inches. We're going to be working in pixels and we'll just call this, uh, let's make it four by four. So you're going to be wanting to work at different sizes and create different sized um, patterns because the different resolutions of images is going to give you different results. So we're going to start with a four by four and we can fill it with white. Resolution really doesn't matter. So we're just going to click OK. And now what we want to do is we want to zoom in on that. So just grab a little magnifying glass and we'll just zoom in on that all the way in. And what we've got right now is a four by four. So what we need to do is fill the top two pixels with black. So the best way to do that is we need a very, very hard edge brush. And the hardest edge brush that exists is the pencil. And notice we've got the foreground set to black right now. And what we can do with the pencil is just go over it and you can see there's the pixels there. So what we've done is essentially is we've created the first one. So this is going to be a four by four, meaning four pixels by four pixels. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose edit. And then we're going to go down to define pattern. And then we're going to call this one SL for scan line four by four. And just click OK. So that's actually saved. And now we're going to create a new one. We're going to choose file new. And then what we're going to do is we'll do an eight by eight. And we'll just go there once again, zoom in. I'm just using the alt key or the option key and then zooming in with my wheel. All right, so now we can just paint over the first part of that. So now we've got an eight by eight, same thing, edit define pattern. And we're gonna call this SL eight by eight. All right, so let's make a really huge one. What we're gonna do is just double the size of this one. So we're just gonna choose image size and I'll show you what happens when we do this. So we're going to go to say a 12 by 12 and click OK. And in fact, in this case, you can see it's perfect. It's nice. Um, we can actually just use that. You can see there's no blurring on the edges there. So we can actually just go edit and we can define brush uh, pattern, sorry, and SL 12 by 12. All right, so let's go for a really small one. So we're going to choose image size. And let's drop this one down to a two by two. So this is going to be a single pixel. And we can choose edit, define brush preset. Now the reason I was, uh, hang on, did I say brush preset? I'm sorry, let's go back to pattern. 
the prime pattern, SL, and two by two. So what I've done is I've actually just created a whole pattern set here. All right, so as you can see, we're creating these scan lines in different sizes, and that's for two different reasons. One is for a different type of effect. Sometimes a thick line is gonna give a great effect, whereas other times a very fine line is gonna provide more detail in your images, which is gonna give it a completely different look and feel. The other reason is the resolution. If something is thick on a low resolution image, when you go to a high res image, that can be so fine that you can't see it. So one size doesn't fit all. So what we're actually doing is creating a pack of scan lines here. And what I'll do is just to help you out is if you just click right here, uh, you can go to my website where I've got the written tutorial. I've got this video embedded as well. But more importantly, I'll give you a set of patterns that you can use some scan lines here. So you could create them yourself or you can just grab the ones that I've created. So anyway, moving right along. Close this out. We don't need this anymore. And same with this one. All right, so here we are on our steampunk woman. And what I'm gonna do is just create a new layer. And this is where we can do our scan line effects. So what we need to do is just choose the fill. So you could go up under edit fill if you wanted and, uh, and then go that way, which I find is kind of slow. I prefer to just use the shift delete and that would be shift backspace on Windows. And that opens up the fill dialog box. And then we just change contents from foreground to pattern and then click on the pattern here and we can see the patterns that we've created. So we could go here and we could apply that one. That's the very fine one that we created. And it might be a little hard to see, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a different, a couple of different ones. So let's just create a new layer on top of that one. We're gonna hide that. Let's just fill it again. And this time we're gonna go with the larger one, which is probably gonna look huge, yep. And once again, we're gonna create a new layer and we're just gonna shift delete and we're gonna go down to say, I don't know, this one here. And that looks pretty good. So we've got the different uh, types of scan lines here. So let's have a look at how we can use these. So what we're gonna do is just change the blend modes. A lot of the time overlay blend mode is gonna look really good and we just need to drop the opacity down a little bit. So we can see that looks pretty good at that size. Let's have a look at the bigger one. Change that to overlay blend mode and uh, We'll drop the opacity down a little bit and stay tuned because I've got a few more options I'm going to be showing you pretty soon too. And then we can go for the extremely fine one, which this one might be a little fine, but uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's not bad actually in overlay mode. We can see we could add those little lines in there. It's kind of cool with that very detailed. Now, I've shrunk this image down. You can see this is 100%. So at a higher resolution, you're obviously going to need to use a thicker line. And at a smaller resolution, you know, a file you might put on the web, you could use this very thin one. So what I'm going to do for variations, though, is we're going to go to this size here. So let me go back up. Say so that's overlay mode. There's another couple of modes that seem to work quite well. Multiply works really well if you want to just darken it. And then we can just kind of play around with that. And it just shows the dark lines, hides the white lines. And then the other option, of course, is we can go to the screen mode. And the screen will show the light and uh, lines there, see that? And uh, not, and it will hide the darkened ones. So what you got to do is, if you look at this, you'll see in the darker areas, this shows up really well. In the lighter areas, you don't really see a lot going on. That's the thing about screen mode. So it really depends what kind of effect you want. And of course, if we go into overlay mode here, we get to see them still more in the, uh, in the darker areas, um, not as much in the lighter areas, but it will show a little bit more. All right, so what we're gonna do though, is let's have a look here. We've created this uh, strong kind of a scan line effect, but maybe we don't want it all over our model. Maybe we just want it in the background areas. So what we can do is create a layer mask. We're gonna go down, click on a new layer mask. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to paint with black. So if we change the foreground color to black, grab a brush, not the pencil anymore, grab the brush tool. And we can see we've got our opacity all the way up. We've got a soft brush. I'm just gonna make it larger by hitting my right bracket key. And now if I paint over here, what I can do is I can hide, see that, that scan line effect is hidden from those areas that I'm painting. So we could do that, make the brush a little smaller, bring it down there. And now as you can see there, We've got the scan lines just happening in the background and not on our subject anymore. So we can go around there, just clean that up. You could get this as exact as you want. A lot of the time, though, you might want it on the bottom, which I'm going to. I'm actually going to go here and make that appear on the bottom. 
The other thing I could do is work with pressure sensitivity. So if I'm going to turn that on, um, if you're working with a Wacom tablet, you can turn on the pan pressure so you can fade it in so you can have it darker in areas and lighter in other areas and just kind of blend it in like what I'm going to do here. See how I'm just kind of blending that in a little bit and maybe just allow a little bit to go through on some of these edges, uh, maybe on the gun there and just kind of blending it with the um, scan lines and the non-scan line area. You might put a little bit just on that shoulder there or not. It's up to you. Now, if you don't have the Wacom pen, you could just drop the opacity down and just do it for mouse, maybe at 30 to 50%. So maybe I'm going to put a little bit on the top of the hat there. I kind of like it there. And then there we go. We've essentially just blended in our TV scan lines there before and after. And we could experiment turning the opacity up a little bit more now that we're kind of hiding it from some of those other areas. And you know, that kind of shows you the different things you can do with that. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this effect. I know it was something a little bit different this week, but I really wanted to come back to a foundational thing that you could use over and over again, because really what I'm trying to do here on this Photoshop Cafe channel is not necessarily um, be like, you know, here's how to do all these elaborate things. What I want to do is give you practical things that you can use every day to make you a better Photoshop. So whether you're a designer or a photographer, or you're a hybrid somewhere in the middle there, kind of a little bit more like me, I'm a photographer and a designer, I want to give you the tools that you can use every single day that are practical, that can give your image just that little extra pizzazz. So anyway, if you like these kind of tutorials and you like what I've been doing here on the channel, hit the subscribe button because every week I'm making a new tutorial and I've got some really great stuff coming up that I want to share with you. Also, do me a favor, hit that like button. This is not just all about me talking to you. I want to hear from you as well. So add a comment uh, underneath there. And let's get some discussions going. Let's see, you know, what are your challenges? What are the things that excite you, inspire you? And what direction would you like to see this channel go in the future? So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.